thanks again to Zero for uh, sponsoring the entire series and providing us with no less than two presenters. This is the second one. This is Owen. He's going to talk all about test-driven development. There are pens and papers available down here, should we need them? But Don't think we will, so I think that was a, a false promise. But. <laughs> Come on, you've got to have a test. Uh, well, well, we'll see how this goes and maybe we'll, uh, we'll pull out the pens and papers later. Uh, but I'm Owen uh, and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about a high level view of uh, test driven design. Um, where I come from, uh, over in the UK, uh, no actually that's, no, that's got nothing to do with it. Uh, but when I started in IT, um, I started out for a testing consultancy. Um, so that got me really involved in the idea of, of how, we, uh, how we involve ourselves with software quality and how we make the quality of what we're producing much better. Uh, I was involved in research and design um, and we were looking at how uh, test driven design and how all these methodologies could be used and put into practice and it got me really really excited about test driven development and then I went to another company and they didn't really practice it and I kind of went, oh, I don't get to use it anymore, that was a waste of skills. But instead I kind of evangelized uh, probably a bit too much at times. Uh, but at other times I just tried to make people aware of what test driven development is, what benefits it can bring and why you can feel safe to ignore it at certain times and why you shouldn't ignore it at other times. So that's what I kind of want to bring into to the discussion today. Um, I don't want to just be up here preaching about TDD and how great it is and how you should go away and read up on everything and get it completely wrong, go into your job and bail and say test driven development is actually shit. Uh, instead, I want you to go away from this and say, yeah, there is this thing called test-driven development um, and it's something that maybe I should look at within my job. Uh, it's maybe something that I should look at when I'm looking for jobs, whether I, I go for, for jobs that actually practice TDD and other agile technologies, uh, agile methodologies, sorry, and, um, and also when I can safely ignore it. So that's what we'll cover today. Uh, we'll cover why testing is important, uh, why testing can be ignored at certain times, uh, why personally I believe in TDD and why I'm preaching up here and hopefully encourage you to seek out uh, a job that practices best, practices within TDD or at least kind of encourage you to ask your boss to maybe go out and research a bit more on it. What we won't be covering, uh, I won't be covering how to write unit tests and unit testing, uh, that's a way bigger topic than I could possibly cover within 40 minutes that I was given um, and also uh, I would have had to do too much preparation to be able to put that one together. And also I won't be teaching you to be a good tester. Uh, it takes a lot more uh, skill, a lot more experience than you can get just by coming to this one lecture to actually uh, be a good tester. So uh, to start out with, why do we care? Okay, Everybody within software development, or at least I hope everybody within this room, really wants to be Captain Awesome. They want to be the best person at their job, they want to produce great software, even if only because they'll make some money doing it. Okay? Hopefully, you've all got a bit more uh, effort than that, and you actually want to be good at your job so that you can help other people be good at your job, and you can actually have a fun time while you're working. Uh, so that's why I care about the quality of the software that I produce, that's why I care about the, the products that I deliver to my customers, and that's why I believe in TDD. So we all want to do great things, we want to be team players, we uh, might want to get it exactly right as the customer wants. Uh, we obviously hopefully want to make some money, because uh, you're in the right industry to make a little bit of money at least. Uh, and we uh, also want to create something that people can use. Okay? Generally it's a bit more rewarding to create a project that goes on to actually be like Facebook, rather than go and create a project that then becomes like uh, Friendster or something, you know, and dies death. Not that Friendster was bad, it was great for a couple of years, but um, it then died. And I'm not saying one of those used TDD and one of those didn't either. Okay, we work in quite a unique field. Um, apart from the ones that are listed up there, developers, testers, and analy analysis. Analy <laughs> Somebody else there. Thank you, analysts. Um, there are many other roles within IT. You might have designers, you might have documenters. There are, there are loads and loads of roles. But beyond that, there's no other kind of industry where you're actually asked to be lots of different things. So unless somebody else has done another degree, I'm going to guess that there aren't many people here who also trained architects. No? Big shake of the head. Anybody here a trained doctor? No? No? Uh, pilot, maybe. You've got a pilot in the room? Yeah, okay, no. Nobody's going to be able to take you down to the sideline. 
Or maybe there's a soldier within the room, you know? <laughs> I wonder how those game developers actually make it so realistic. Okay? So how do we know what the customer actually wants when we don't do what the customer does? You know, we're not doctors, we're not architects. This is a classic uh, diagram that you probably would have seen emailed around many years ago. Uh, basically about how everybody views software problems in a completely different way. And the only real right one is what the customer wanted up on the left. Okay? Everybody else gets a slightly different interpretation of what the customer wanted. There are right ones, but it depends on your, your definition of right. Okay? So communication is key, and that's what I'm trying to explain here. So just a little mental test for you. Uh, if anybody can tell me what field this term comes from. Oh, sorry, that term, idiopathic. Sorry, it's in a bit small words. Where is that used? Anybody? Any guesses? Doctors? Sorry? Doctors? Yeah, absolutely. It's a medical term, and it means of unknown cause. So if anything, you're going to go away and say, hmm, that was idiopathic. OK. A slash P, where does this come from? I'm giving you a clue. It does come from the previous ones. Oh, it might be a financial term. OK, what does it mean in the financial world? Accounts payable. OK, accounts payable. Uh, this one that I wrote up happens to not come from the financial world, but it does mean something in the financial world. So there you get a, quite a, a, a classic case of it means one thing over here, but it means something else over there. I actually wrote it up because it's aviation term for autopilot. Okay, you just write down AV. Uh, carotid. Anybody know what that one means? No, no, no trained architects in the room, room then. It means the human figure functioning as a column. <laughs> So there you go. Um, <laughs> Pachymeninges, one of my favorite words ever, that I just looked up on the internet yesterday. <laughs> no, nobody, any guesses? Any guesses of the field? Zoology, Zoology that sounds a good one. Uh, it's not actually, it's another medical it's term. Medical term. Medical. Yeah. yeah, and it means the mem uh, one of the membranes that covers the brain. Uh, SAR time. Oh, that's aviation. That is aviation, what does it mean? Search and rescue time. Absolutely. So it's the time before a search action commences for a missing aircraft. Ooh, fancy. Uh, a bit of an easier one, anterior. That is a medical term, or at least it's used quite often in the medical world, and it just means the front. Okay. Yeah, and it means lots of different things in lots of different, lots of different <laughs> fields. So that's just as an example for you, how there's languages that we kind of have to learn as software developers, because in the end, your customer is going to be speaking that, that kind of language. So, why should we use tests? Okay, they're, they're kind of a universal kind of image of whether something is good or bad, and that's all it will give you uh, within a certain boundary whether something works or doesn't work. So who can tell me whether that's a good thing or a bad thing? That's red at the bottom, by the way, people. Feel free to put your hands up. Do we think we've got a pass or a fail? Fail. Okay, you don't know anything about the actual test or or what it's actually covering, it's actually a really simple calculator test. Um, but you know that there's a red line there, so that probably means something's going wrong. Okay, so as a software developer, you can quickly pick up on things not working the way you expect them to work. That test? Yeah, so, uh, I, what, what is it? It's a numerator and a denominator within division, and then you get an expected result. So is the, te the test is bad? No. <laughs> so you haven't got the right specialist in to write your test for you. <laughs> but anybody who knows anything about division should be able to pick up the fact that the test is bad. But you, as a software developer, don't need to know that the test is bad. You just need to know that the test is failing. Okay? So then you would pass it on to somebody who does know whether the test is bad or not. Or actually, you probably just develop it and make it output 25 and then go, actually, that's so wrong. But anyway. They're repeatable, so uh, automated tests can be repeated ad nauseum uh, without much input and they give you quick feedback to be treated with disdain about how well, how well your progress is going. Okay? Tests will not tell you whether your software is good or bad, uh, but they will give you some insight into whether you've broken something very quickly. Okay? They're also modifiable. Tests are inherently modifiable.